home in the rugged heart of WA to uncover the secrets of a very cryptic animal. This one is an ambush predator. It's even been called Australia's anaconda. It's the Pilbara olive python. I'm joining Dr. David Pearson, who's been researching these mysterious giant snakes for over 30 years. As a part of his study, David has been fitting the pythons with radio transmitters. It's a chip on the back of a neck, so that's how we identify or keep track of particular individuals. He hopes tracking them will uncover even more of their secretive behaviours. It's all a matter of going towards that stronger signal. Oh, look at that. Straight on cue. Away. On cue. All right, well, let's see if we can get closer, eh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Olive pythons can reach up to 6.5 metres in length and are among the longest snakes in the world. So it should be easy to spot them on the flats. You wouldn't think you could lose a four metre snake, but it turns out you can really easily. So what is he doing down here? Well, if he's hungry, he'll be lying in an ambush position, body submerged in the water, and head just on the edge of the bank with his nostrils and eyes out of the water, just waiting for something to come down and reach down to drink, and he'll strike out from that position a couple of metres, and you strike with your mouth wide open like that. David tells me they can disarticulate their jaws in four places, and stretch their mouths open to the size of a basketball. Oh, yes, there he is. You hear that signal now? Yeah. I guess he might be in the grass here for So be careful where you step. Because we're potential prey at this point. Oh. <laughs> we're potential prey at this point. Hey, you big boy. Oh my God, is he under there? I think he might be. Oh, for God's sake. These all seem pretty solid. How can he be in like two metres square and he's four metres long and we can't see him? I don't think I'm going to be able to find him here. I think he's in amongst this tangle of reeds. Its rainbow-like sheen, formed from shedding oil under its scales, is providing the perfect camouflage in this watery environment. I mean, talk about a secret life. We know that this snake is right here and we still can't spot him. That's how difficult they are to study. After close to two hours of failed snake wrangling, we call time on this tricky customer. The next day, David has a surprise for me. I was really looking forward to seeing one of these pythons in the wild. Got really, really close. But David says he's got something that's almost as good. He's got a python that's come in for a bit of a welfare check to make sure she's doing okay. And I get to help measure her. That looks sort of heavy, I'm not going to lie. It is a large Pilbara olive python. Have a feel. Ooh. (gasps) Hello! Oh, she's pretty. She is pretty. Oh God, she's, she's strong. So, okay, talk to me about how she's actually sensing the world around her. We can see periodically that tongue flick and she waves it up and down to, to get the scent particles. We've got these thermal pits on the side of her mouth, but also on the front. So that allows her to actually detect heat, infrared, at night time, and it makes her a very effective hunter. Did you hear a sound? The hiss then. The other interesting thing is they have the vestiges of their hind limbs from their ancestors long ago. Oh, tiny! You can see that little tiny tiny spur? Yeah, that's all that remains of their their hind limbs from that ancestor many millions of years ago. 
As a part of the check, we take measurements that'll serve as important data points for David's research. All right, you can have the body end. You okay oh, there? darling, yeah. Okay. Oh, she feels just like pure, pure muscle. Give her a bit of a stretch here. We'll just wait till she relaxes a little. Yeah, all right, matey. So you actually got to stretch her quite a bit. Like... Yeah, just, just straighten her out. She's still got a lot of muscle tone, so she's still not entirely quiet. And then right. just grab the last bit of that tail. I'll fix well, keep the head away from me, good. <laughs> so we're measuring what's oh, called a... Oh, even her tail's muscly. We're measuring what's called a Come snout here. vent length. That's at there. There, yep. So that is 327.7. Her growth, weight. Just over six kilos. And whether she's eaten recently will tell us more about how she's surviving in this location. Traditional um, research techniques of monitoring and survey for these things just don't work. They're mm. highly cryptic, they breed infrequently, they probably live in excess of 50 years. Wow. And so understanding the population trends and the threats to these animals is really difficult. What are the threats to this species? Well, the Pilbara is very active with various um, mining operations, but also lots of tourism now. So we Ooh. need to... <laughs> He's taking a liking to you. She's no. taking a liking to you. Well, no, well, I thought it was a bl another bloody snake and it's just the same <laughs> snake four metres away. So, yeah, um, certainly oh, if you. there was... No um, curling around me. Lots of clearing of the habitat um, and disturbance of those water bodies and indeed the loss of prey species that are important. So rock wallabies and quolls, these are mm. species that are declining in the area because of feral animals and, and loss of... Um, habitat and so we have to be careful we set aside sufficient habitat for these species and and keep an eye on those other threats things like managing fire managing feral animals things like foxes and cats that impact their prey because they need some big prey to be able to breed successfully are you okay <laughs> yeah no she settled down there. she's really not putting a good squeeze on me which is nice it's time to release this olive beauty back into the location she was found She's heavy. You know when you go to the shops and then you think, no, I'm going to carry every single thing I bought in in one go? <laughs> That's what it's like. We still need our wits about us. There you go, love. Oh, she looked, she looked moderately offended. Oh. <laughs> she could be. <laughs> oh, she's just so beautiful. You can see that tongue flicking around. She's, she's getting the sense of uh, where oh, she is. Oh, you go, love. Look at her go! I imagine she'll haul herself out on the bank and coil up again under the grass where she was pretty much when I picked her up. Oh, <laughs> I feel like I'm saying goodbye to a friend. <laughs> really drives home for me how this snake is sort of like a metaphor. <laughs> for all of Australian wildlife, right? It's often really big and really special, but it's also really, really secretive. It's just down there doing its thing away from us. And I feel like that is quintessentially Australian to be able to do that. Hey, it's Dr. Anne, and I hope you enjoyed the adventure that we had. But did you know that that's actually one of six episodes that we made of Dr. Anne's Secret Lives? And you can stream them all right now on ABC iView. Just download the ABC iView app and you're away. I'll see you over there. <laughs>